The next problem we're going to look at in decision one is where you have to visit every arc in a graph. So for example we need to go along every one of these arcs. You may remember earlier on when we first looked at graphs we looked at Eulerian graphs and semi-Eulerian graphs and we tried to draw round graphs without moving our pencil or pen from the paper. And this is the type of problem we're looking at. We call these problems root inspection because we're inspecting every bit of the root and the algorithm we use to try and find the most efficient way, the least total weight of arcs way of achieving this we call the root inspection algorithm, or it's sometimes known as the Chinese Postman algorithm. It's called this because obviously going along every one of the arcs is a bit like a postman going along every street and needing to go along every street so that letters can be delivered at various houses. The Chinese reference is probably because of the mathematician who in 1962 came up with this algorithm, this way of solving these type of problems, and we'll have a little look at um, that at the end of this video. What I'd like you to do first though, is to try and draw around these two, see how you get on, and then once you've tried to do that, see if you can think what's the cheapest way in terms of the total weight of arcs of visiting every one of the arcs in both of these diagrams. Quite a tricky thing to ask you to do that but have a quick go at it, have a think about it. Start off just having a play, seeing if you can draw around without your pencil leaving the paper. Starting at F then we can go along F up to B Then from B we could go down here to G. We could maybe go then to I. If we do this box bit in the middle. And then go round job done okay so we've managed to do it with this one but note that we started at F and we finished at G you may have noticed this one's not so easy You may have remembered that when we looked at this and we talked about that Bridges of Konigsberg problem that it was something to do, whether we could do this or not, was something to do with the order, wasn't it? We needed even order nodes, in other words an even number of ends of arcs meeting at that node, so we had one arc to get there, one to get away, so they were paired. Notice here that we started at F and finished at G. We could have started at G and finished at F because these are the only two nodes with odd order. The problem we've got with this graph here is we've got A, B, C and I all odd order. So you would have had more problems with this one. Here, if we'd wanted to visit every arc we could have done it by just using the total weight here. Or alternatively, if we needed to start and finish at the same point, as we often do with these sort of problems, if you're delivering the post, then you might start at the depot and need to finish at the depot. So you'd need to get back to F once you'd got to G. The quickest way of doing this will be going along every arc once, which you obviously have to do, and then adding the shortest route back from G to F. So if we look at the graph here, try and work out what the shortest route is from G to F. Well here we've got 5, 12 and 16. So that's 28, 33 and it doesn't look like we can beat that, does it? 
So no, there's no way we can beat that. So that route there of 33 looks our favourite. So we would add 33 to 200. We'd actually go on these arcs twice. We'd need to go on those three arcs there twice. So we get a total of 233. OK, so let's work through this slightly easier example here. The first thing you do is you look at all of the nodes and check the order of each node. And you can see here we've got order 3 at A, 4 at B, 3 at C, 3 at D, 4 at E and 3 at F. And what we then do is we list the odd nodes. So we've got odd nodes, we've got our A, C, D and F. We then pair up the odd nodes any way that works. So with 4 we've got A to C in which case we would have to pair up D and F. We've got A to D in which case we would pair up maybe C and F and A to F and we would have to then pair up C and D. And those are actually the only three ways that we can pair up. What we then do is we look for the shortest routes between these points. So A to C, shortest route between A and C is across the top here, isn't it? 9 and 9, 18. So write that in there. And then between D and F, again across the bottom, 22. So write that in there. And that gives us a total of 40 for that pairing. A and D, well the shortest route between A and D, that's quite tricky isn't it? We've got 18 there but these are quite big. We've got 21 there and 11 there. That gives us 32, doesn't it? And that's probably as good as we can do, I think. So 32 between A and D. And between C and F, again, it's quite a long way round. So we've got 18 and 12 there, which is 30. And I think, again, that's probably the best. Now, clearly this isn't in the running, but you do get method marks for writing these out. So make sure you write all of them out in your working. 62. And then finally A to F. Well that's just 12. So this one's looking quite good so far. And then C to D. Again it looks quite close. But actually... We've got 30 there. Can we beat that? 21? No, we can't, can we? So 30 there. So perhaps not as good as it initially looked. In fact, 42. So that means that the best we can manage is this one here. So this is our best pairing with a value of 40. So to solve the problem then, we would go the route from A to C twice and the route from D to F twice. Now notice what I've done here is I've drawn in extra arcs. They're not actually extra arcs, but it's illustrating that the this arc here we go on twice, this arc here we go on twice, and so on. So in order to solve this in the best possible way, we would add our cheapest pairing of 40, giving us a total of 209. So there's the solution. If we start here, maybe start at A, we can now go round the whole graph, including using these extra arcs I've drawn in for a total of 209. And we can't beat that. That's the total length 
of the route for the solving the route inspection problem. Okay, invented in 1962 by a Chinese mathematician called Megu Gan. And that's it basically. As we discussed earlier, when we talked about the order of nodes, because we always have a total, a sum of orders which is even, because each arc adds two, that means that when we get an odd node, we need another odd node to pair up to make the sum even. So odd nodes only come in pairs. So with these problems, you'll either get no odd nodes, two odd nodes, four odd nodes, six odd nodes, etc. We'll look at some different scenarios in the course of the lesson. Right, now have a quick look at this. You may need to copy it, print screen it or something, because I'm going to ask you some questions related to this problem. 